435, 435, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Let's all stand together as we sing. 435, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. From my wandering and going astray Since Jesus came into my heart And my sins which were many are all washed away Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy are my soul I shall go there to dwell in that city I know Since Jesus came into my heart And I'm happy, so happy Onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart Amen. Good singing. Good to see you in church this morning. And uh, this is I Love My Bible Sunday, and uh, we're looking forward to a great day today. Uh, we will get your uh, quarter folders that you have. We'll, we'll collect those in just a little bit. We won't take them in the regular offering. Uh, that'll be a rather heavy. So uh, we've got a method we're going to do, and we'll let you know what that is in a little bit. But uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for being in church this morning. Let's bow together for prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you now this morning. We thank you for another Lord's Day that you've given to us. And uh, Lord, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we're, we're glad to be together here this morning. And we uh, ask you in a special way to meet with us and to speak to our hearts this morning. We want to thank you today for the Bible. And thank you, Lord, for uh, allowing us to be in the United States of America. Lord, what a heritage we have and uh, based upon the Word of God. And Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for the Bible this morning. And I yeah. pray that you will help each of us uh, grow in our appreciation of your Word and our dedication to your Word. That truly, as the psalmist said, our, it would be our delight and we would meditate in it day and night. And so, Lord, may you be pleased with the service this morning and may you work in our hearts and do what only you can do. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and duty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, a blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, list to the loving call wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, 
wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. 283, 283, I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. 283 on that first together. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am seeing from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. On the last, I have found the joy no tongue can tell. Now its waves of glory roll. It is like a great o'erflowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. few announcements for us now. Listen carefully if you would. Uh, regular schedule today, our 530 Christian growth class. We're going to continue the lesson we started last week, which is on soul winning. It's uh, witnessing to others. Every Christian ought to be able to know how to take their Bible and lead someone else to put their faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, that's, the, that's the way God intended for it to be. That every believer, the, the very least you should do is be able to show from the Bible how someone else can put their faith in Christ and, and lead them to Christ. You can't save anybody. I can't save anybody. But we can lead them to the one who can. And they can put their faith in Christ. And if you're interested in learning uh, how to do that, we're going to help you with that this evening. That's 530 Christian Growth Class in the conference room, which is right downstairs across from the nursery. All right, that's 530. Then 630 tonight uh, will be the evening service. And uh, I'm going to bring a very important message this evening. It's, it's entitled, Truth is Fallen in the Street. Truth is fallen in the street. And uh, it's going to be very applicable to where I believe we are in our country. Uh, at this time, and uh, I think it'll be a very helpful uh, message for you this evening, 6.30 for the evening service. Uh, ladies who are uh, going on, uh, wanting to go on the ladies' retreat, that's, I believe, March 11th and 12th. Uh, we gave those uh, brochures out uh, Wednesday evening. We still have some, I'm sure. I just don't know where they are. Are they back there, Brother John? Good. Brother John has some. If you want information... Uh, on that and you didn't get one Wednesday night you just slip your hand up and he'll give one to you right now okay a couple right right here right here and up here okay and um, we'll make sure you get that what do you got three okay give one to the one who was out Felicia give one here we'll, we'll run more copies off we got we got it that um, that money the, the $30 registration needs to be in by the 15th which is a which is really by 14th by next Sunday okay and so if you can uh, get that money in and you can get that to Lindy all right Lindy McKeon Lindy McKeon put your hand up 
She's right here in the choir. Uh, so you get that to Lindy. She'll handle that registration for you, okay? Uh, and that'll be a great time. It's the Mansfield Ladies Retreat, and that's always a great, great event that they have there every March, all right? And uh, let's see. I think that's all I have right now for you. Let's take a moment. And uh, we'll welcome our guests that are with us this morning in the service. And if you're visiting with us today, not a member at Bible Baptist Church, we'd love to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. And so if you're here by yourself or you just brought a guest with you, uh, would you honor us by standing just for a moment? We can find out who you are and where you're from. Okay. Um, Tara, do you want to introduce your daughter for us? Good to see Tara back. I haven't seen her for a while. You have to stand up if you don't want to. Who, who do you got? This is your daughter. That's great. That's wonderful. So you get in church. So wonderful to have you today. God bless you. Thank you for coming. That's great. Okay, over here, Ricky. She's back there, John. She's not sitting with her, right? This is your niece, Madison. Good to have you, Madison. Now, Madison, I'm glad to have you here today. I'll have to talk to you about who you're hanging around, okay? And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you today. Great. And let's go over here to this side. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Good to have you this morning. Thank you for visiting. Great. Thank you for coming. All right. The ushers hand you a, a welcome card. If you'll be kind enough to fill that card out for us, we would appreciate that. And then a little bit when we have the offering. If you'll be kind enough to just drop that card in the offering for us and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming this morning, we're glad you're here. And let's give all our guests a warm welcome, shall we?
246, 246, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Higher ground. Let's sing that first and last together. On that first, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright, but still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. All right. Well, it's I Love My Church Month, and uh, we get to hear a testimony this morning by way of video uh, from the Taylors, uh, Don and Cindy Taylor. Uh, they, Cindy, of course, this has been her church for a long time. Uh, well, not that long. She's just not that old. But, um, but many years she's been here. And, of course, Brother Don has been here, so I think, 10 years now or close to it. And uh, just uh, tremendous. Uh, of course, they both sing in the choir, uh, help out in different areas. Uh, much of many things they do is behind the scenes, and they kind of like it that way and uh, they do things that are important and need to get done, they're in charge of the sign out front. They, they do that on a regular basis, and uh, so some of the witty things that come out there come from th their fertile imaginations, and, uh, and we appreciate the ministry that that uh, the sign has been. Uh, thousands of people drive by that sign every day, and uh, it's a real ministry, and we appreciate the tailors, and uh, we're excited to hear why they love their church. Let's sing our song, and then we'll hear from there by way of video, all right? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. All right. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go. I go in my early 20s, and I had been running my life and was involved in a lot of wickedness, and God brought me to the end of myself and saved me from what I could have been I go in my early uh, 20s when I was living a life of foolishness and sinfulness. And looking back now, I can see how he orchestrated the events in my God life brought me to, to the end of myself me to him. And save me from what I could have been. I got my early twenties when I was living a life of foolishness and sinfulness. And looking back now, I can see how he orchestrated the events in my life to the end of myself, me to him. What I could have been. I got my early twenties when I was living a life of foolishness and sinfulness. And looking back now, I can see how he orchestrated the events in my God life brought me to, to the end of myself, me to him. I could have rejected him, but I could have been. I I got my early twenties when I was Bob living Reed? a life of foolishness and sin. What is going on? Why? The, the, this isn't acceptable. All right. Don and Cindy, just come up, and we'll just have you do one live right now. Okay. I know it won't be. 
It won't be like that. And I wish you could hear that. They did a great job. They really did. I apologize for that. It's supposed to be all checked out and ready to go, hit play, and it goes. But uh, when you have technology, the devil's in the technology. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll just do this live. And uh, this is, uh, again, it won't, you know, they, they had time to think before. They haven't had time to think this morning. But uh, it'll kind of be an off-the-cuffer uh, right here. But uh, we appreciate them. And uh, they'll, they'll tell you why they love their church, all right? Okay, you're welcome. Well, all I can tell you is what you're going to get is from the heart anyway. Amen. You know, it's a good thing we can laugh at ourselves. It's good to have a sense of humor. It's another thing God gave us. You know, I'll start out by telling you, you know, it's hard to say something that someone else hasn't already said because we all feel the same way. I came here just about 10 years ago, probably just a few months after the pastor. And the first time I walked in this church and, and, and I met the folks that was here, the same loving spirit that was here then is here now. Uh, I don't think there's a stranger that comes in off the street that doesn't feel the love of this church. And that will draw all men. Jesus Christ is lifted up. I love that. I also, I, I am a firm believer. I love the King James Bible. Amen. I think the King James Bible, 1611, is the best English translation. I think uh, it does require some study. But in, in the book, it also, God tells us that we are to study. We're a workman. This is not easy. Everything's not going to stamp of the fingers. But you know what? As soon as I came in here and I heard the pastor preaching, and right out, I said, right here, right here is where it's at. Amen. And I was trans translated from, or, you know, I, I was moved from one area of Ohio to another, and this is where I wound up, and I figured you can't find a better church than this. And uh, I worked with a friend, Bob Wallace. He's the one that brought me here. And the rest is up to God, you know, to, to move in your hearts. Well, with Jesus being lifted up, the King James Bible, the love of the, that draws people here, the old songs, the hymns, the hymnal. Yes, I'll tell you, there's preaching in that book by itself. Souls can be saved. You know when the, the writers of those songs, you know that they've had to feel it, that They've been saved. And the Holy Spirit is flowing through that book just as well as God's Word and the Holy Bible. It's been almost 10 years. I've loved all of it. There's plenty, plenty of places here for everybody to get involved and work. There's ministries that that's still open, that all you got to do out there is, is walk up to the pastor and say, plug me in, I want something to do. And the Bible says that we're saved to serve. We're not saved just to, to go on about life. If you don't get plugged in and start serving, you're robbing yourself. And you're robbing also the body of Christ because we're all together as one. But mainly you are. You're, you're shorting yourself, and you will never know the blessings of serving if you don't get plugged in. And there are plenty of opportunities to do that here. That's why I love Bible Baptist Church. Well, there's really not much to add. Um, I, this is a second chance to, to just tell you all that we love you, and um, I'm just glad that God is a God of second chances and that he, he saved my soul and, and that he directed me here um, about 30 years ago. I, I, I called this home and, and my children grew up here. I grew up here as uh, a babe in Christ and uh, under uh, different leadership here and there, but um, God has still moved in my life and, and he, he's not done with me yet. <laughs> And I, I'm so glad about that. I, I love the, the spirit here, like my husband said, and um, the people here. And we, 
when we've traveled, we've, we've been in different churches, and, and you just cannot find this spirit that you find here. And um, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It, it's, it's a wonderful place to call home. And um, uh, the preaching is, is sound um, and, and unchanging. And, and I love that, and you can't find that in a lot of other churches either. Um, everybody's, the world is changing. We're allowing, uh, Christians are allowing the world to um, compromise our, our standard of living, and that's not happening in this place. Um, we, we love all of you, and um, we hope you all stick around and that we'll continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. 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 That's great. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, and uh, appreciate that testimony this morning. All right, we're going to uh, get that other video ready to go for the offering, okay? Uh, we're going to sing a song together, then we'll be seated, and then we'll see the vid a video about the uh, Bibles, National Bible Publishing Month, and uh, then we'll tell you how we're going to collect your folders. Uh, for How many have a folder to turn in, a coin folder? Good, a lot of you do. Wonderful. Uh, all of them are out, and I understand if all of them come back in, that's a thousand dollars. Is that what you said? So, it'd be a thousand dollars to publish Bibles, and uh, you know you'll you'll see in the video the press at Milford and everything, and that's uh, that's a press that ought to be running all the time. Uh, the only thing the reason it doesn't run is when they don't have the funds to to run it, and so if we uh, if churches would get behind it, we shouldn't leave it up to the world to publish God's word. We have we have different uh, Milford's not the only place that has presses and publishes Bibles if 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 Zondervan and the other big publishers if they decided one day hey we're not going to present we're not going to print Bibles anymore where are we going to get our Bibles uh, with it's not their responsibility to get it published it's God's people's responsibility to get it published and so appreciate so much getting behind that and uh, bringing in uh, you're offering for that today, okay? Well, listen, let's sing together. Take your songbook. We'll have one more song, and it's going to be number three. If you need your songbook, it's Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. What do you need? Oh, yeah. Um, no, the kid, do the kids have quarter folders? Do the children have quarter, quarter folders? Boy, that's a lot to say, isn't it? Because they say, we'll leave them in for that if they do. Let's leave them in until after that video, okay? And then once they see that, and uh, if they want to give their quarters, then, then we'll take them out. Okay? All right. Number three, let's stand together and we'll sing it. Amazing Grace. On that first together. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as Let's sing that first stanza one more time without the instruments. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I am found, was blind, but now I see. All right, great singing. Be seated, if you will. Want to, uh, fellas, you don't have to come yet. You can uh, just sit down if you want. Uh, we're going to show a video first, okay? Find a place to sit. I want you to see the... Just a short video, a uh, portion of uh, National Bible Publishing Month, which is February, and uh, churches like ours all around the country are going to be uh, taking special offerings throughout this month and uh, sending it for the publishing of the Word of God, and uh, we're glad to have a part in this. So if you have that ready to go, we're ready for you, all right? Uh, it's not our day for technology, is it? Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Milford, Ohio, uh, just about an hour, a little over an hour south of us at uh, First Baptist Church of Milford, and they have a, a great printing ministry, Bible printing ministry there. Um, what do you think, fellas? Is it going to be recoverable or not? Okay, let this lady help you, if she can. <laughs> this sir, we talked about having a cabinet, you know, in Sunday school. This is an expert in this area, and uh, she just happens to be here this morning. Isn't that great? See if they can work on that. What we're going to do then is we're going to have you just come up and place your folders in either one of these boxes, okay? And because um, if we pass them through the plates, it's going to get pretty heavy for these guys, and they'll fall out and such. So um, as most of you found out, that you had to tape them shut or something to keep the quarters from falling out. Have we recovered it? Yes? Oh, don't be humble now. <laughs> You went back there, and now it's fixed, so we'll, we'll give you the credit, all right? You got it? You went back there, and now it's fixed, so we'll, we'll give you the oh, credit, that's me. all right? National Bible involved uh, in a very, very important way for bearing precious seed and that is through National Bible Publishing Month. You went back there and now it's fixed, so we'll, we'll give you oh, the credit. Oh, that's me. All right. 
For the last 43 years, Bearing Precious Seed has been concerned about publishing the Word of very, God very in the languages of the people and getting it into their hands so that, that they can National have what Bible you and I have had month. all of our lives. Behind went me back there and now it's fixed, so we'll, we'll give you the uh, that's me. is our web press. For the we, last 43 uh, use years, that to print the Word of God and uh, concerned we about publishing it. Too many voices there, all right. Okay, we'll have to work on that. We'll try to have it ready for tonight for you to see it. But if you have your uh, uh, coin folders, why don't you start, just, just come down the aisles, put them in the boxes, and then you can go back, and then we'll get the children dismissed Children's Church, all right? Come right up. We don't have anybody at the piano either, do we, Lisa? This will be a good time to be at the piano. And we'll have a little, you just play a little offertory for us, something, something that will bring in money. And... Uh, Bringing in the sheaves or something? No, I'm kidding. Okay? All right. Follow Brother Wallace. He'll lead the way right here and down this way. Jeanette's here. Good. you if you didn't bring them this morning you forgot them you can bring them tonight we didn't put them in that'll be fine uh, appreciate you so much your giving to that special offering that's exciting we'll let you know how much came in uh, the fellows will be counting it all afternoon no they won't but uh, I think all oh, that's a lot of quarters to count right there so uh, but it's great thank you so much for doing that all right fellas why don't you come we'll get our regular offering now this morning and uh, if you'll give as God has blessed you and prospered you and if you're uh, filled out the visitor card for us this morning. If you'll be kind enough, just put that in the plate when it goes by. And again, we thank you for being here this morning. All right, let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for the privilege that's ours to give. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless the gifts we bring this morning. We thank you, Lord, for how well you give to us and take care of us. And I pray, Lord, that the gifts we bring this morning would reflect our love for you. And Father, I pray you'd use them to take care of the needs of the work here that we can continue to minister to the people of our area and really, Lord, take the gospel to the ends of the earth. So bless the offering today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Take your Bible this morning, if you would please, for our scripture reading to James chapter 1, if you would please, James chapter 1. James 1, we're going to read verses 21 through 25. James chapter 1 and verses 21 through 25. We read the verses responsively. We'll begin together on verse 21, then I'll read 22, together on 23, alternate until we end together with verse number 25. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 21 of James chapter 1. Ready? Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture now this morning. And Father, we ask you that you would continue to make our hearts ready uh, to receive the truth that you have for us today. Lord, we thank you for the Bible, and I pray that each of us will be prepared uh, to give our attention to the only book you've ever written. And Father, I pray your blessing now in the special that it will make our hearts prepared and ready to receive your word and what you have for us this morning. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking things that could not satisfy and then I heard my Savior speaking draw from my well that never shall run dry fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of Christ my Lord, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, fill my cup, fill it up and make me things this world gave you. Leave hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you. If you kneel to him and humbly pray, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Good. 
Father in heaven, we bow before you now in prayer and we again look for your help as we open up your word. I want to thank you for the Bible this morning and thank you, Lord, that it's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And I pray that it would accomplish what you would want it to accomplish in each one of our lives this morning. And Lord, I pray you'd help me as I bring the truth today, help each one of the folks as they listen this morning. May your will be done in every heart and life, please. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The, the Bible is full of great facts. In fact, it's not just facts, it's truth. Thy word is truth. But you know, the truths don't do you any good if you just know them, but you don't receive them. There's a difference between knowing something and receiving something. I have many times talked to people who would, and I begin the plan of salvation, and they'll say, oh, I know that. Now, knowing the plan of salvation doesn't mean you're saved. Knowing the plan of salvation doesn't mean you're on your way to heaven. And uh, you have to know the man of salvation, and that's Jesus Christ. That's what takes you to heaven. There's a lot of people who know the Bible, but they've never received the Bible. Help you understand that it's one thing to hear the Word of God. It's another thing to do the Word of God. Be hearers of the Word, James wrote in chapter 1, and not uh, be doers of the Word and not hearers only. So I want to talk to you about receiving the Word of God. Look in James 1 again, if your Bible's still open there. In verse number 21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save your souls. He talks about receiving the Word of God here. And he said something interesting, if you notice, that, that, that seed of the Word of God. And by the way, the Word of God, so it comes in us, And it's like a living seed inside of us. The Bible says in Peter that we're born again, we're saved, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. No one is saved apart from the Word of God. Uh, Remember remember a lady who was concerned about her husband's salvation and had her explain, well, what... Well, why are you concerned about his salvation? He didn't have any desire for spiritual things. And she said, well, we were at church on a Sunday and, and they were playing music and he was touched by the music and he went forward and knelt down at the altar and all of a sudden there were about 10 or 12 people that crowded around him and put their hands on him and they all prayed for him. And then he, they got up and they hugged him and he went back to his seat and And he got out in the car after service and he looked over at her and he said, what was that all about? And they were telling him, you got saved. Let me tell you something. Apart from the Word of God, you don't get saved. You're not saved by emotional experience. You're not saved by some feeling. You're saved by the incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. And and oftentimes when people say they know they're saved, I always ask this question. Has anyone ever taken a Bible and showed you from the Bible how you can know for sure that when you die, you'll go to heaven. And, and oftentimes they'll say, well, no, no one's ever done that. No one's ever taken a Bible. When someone comes forward here and wants to receive Christ, we take them aside and someone shows them from the Bible how they can know they're going to heaven. When I was just a young boy, six years of age, I came forward and wanted Christ to be my Savior. Uh, the evangelist uh, knelt down beside me and opened his Bible. And he showed me from the Bible how I, and that seed of the Word of God came into my heart and it brought forth eternal life inside of me. And it does the same for you. But now notice what he says, which is able to save your souls. Now, the, the difficulty, say, wait a minute, look who James is writing to. Look at verse number uh, 2 uh, of James chapter 1. He says, my brethren. Is he writing to save people here or lost people? He's writing to save people. So wait a minute, I mean to save my soul. I'm already saved, preacher. Let me help you understand something about salvation. And some of you understand this and you know this. But when James, when we talk about salvation, salvation really comes in three tenses. We have, we have been saved. Once we receive Christ our Savior, we're saved from the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is 
death, and that death is in hell, separated from God. And the moment I trust Christ as my Savior, the moment you accept Christ as your Savior, you are the penalty of sin is no longer in the picture. You will never, ever die and go to hell. Jesus paid that penalty for you, and you'll never have to pay that penalty for sin because you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Then there's also the future uh, uh, sense of salvation, and that is one day we're going to be saved from the possibility of sin or the presence of sin. That's when we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, nothing enters there that defiles or any kind of sin whatsoever because God is there and God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Then when we get there, you know what? There'll be no presence of sin. There'll be no possibility to even sin when you get to heaven. But now, in the present tense, what he, that's what he's addressing here, is it'll save your soul. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotion from the power of sin. There are people who are saved from the penalty of sin. They've trusted Christ their Savior. They, they one day will be freed from any possibility of sinning and have no presence of sin. But right now, they're still living under the power of sin. And sin doesn't have to have power of you anymore. He says, this word, if you'll receive the word, it'll give you victory over the power of sin in your life. That's what the word of God will do. And so you have to receive with meekness what's able to save your soul. He's saying that it'll deliver your mind, your will, and your emotions from the power of sin. That's what your soul is. What you think, what you feel, and what you want. And you can be delivered from that right now. Hold your finger there in James 1 or put a piece of paper in it if you would. Go back to the Old Testament to Psalm 19. Would you look there please? Psalm 19. In Psalm 19, I want you to look with me if you will. Verse number 7. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise to simple. And it goes on and says more things about the Word of God. But listen, it's perfect. And what does it do? It converts the soul. It, it, it is able to give you, it is able to change what you think, what you feel, and what you want. It's able to convert that to where you no longer will just do what you think, what you feel, and what you want, but you'll want to do what God feels and what God thinks and what God wants. Uh, you, you can testify that today. But you know why? Listen, I hope you're here in church today because you wanted to come. Okay? I don't think anybody held a gun to your head and uh, said, you got to go to church this morning, okay? Some children may have felt that way with mom and dad, but uh, you, you know what? You, you came because you wanted to come. Hey, and i got news for you. You wanted to come because you knew that's what God wanted you to do. You knew that's where God wanted you to be. And so you traded what you wanted. By the way, there's a lot of folks who weren't in church today, who are not in church today. You know why? They didn't want to. They didn't have that desire. Well, the Bible says it's God that works in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So hey, if you say, hey, I got up and I wanted to be here today and I wanted to come to church, hey, rejoice because that means God is at work in your life. He's working both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And He does that. Now listen, what ought to keep you going day after day is not your emotions. So many people operate just on emotional. Get all charged up and want to shout and weep and cry and, and, and get all excited about it. And, and, and I understand and I think that's wonderful that you do. But then the next time I see you, you're, you're kicking your chin on the ground as you walk. You can sit on the curb and dangle your feet. I mean, you're just as low as you can get. And, and that's how you live your Christian life. You're sky high one day, praise the Lord, hallelujah, great. And the next time we talk to you, you're ready to commit suicide. And you're riding that emotional roller coaster. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't ride the emotional roller coaster. You, you don't need to get real high. You don't need to get real low. And the way to do that is you don't operate on emotion. You operate on truth. You operate on fact on the truth and the fact of the Word of God. It's not how, listen, it's not how I feel, it's what I know. Okay, it's not what you feel, it's what you know. 
what I know to be true about God and what I know to be true about the Bible. There's power in the Word of God. When I said earlier the Word of God is quick, that means it's alive and it's powerful. That, that book right there that you're holding in your lap this morning, uh, and, and that's providing it's not on your phone, but uh, you, that book right there, listen, that's different than any book you have in your house. This book will not just inform you, it will transform you. It was written, it is powerful. It is an amazing, amazing book and there's power in the Word of God. And if you want to be victorious in your Christian life and you want to be steady in your Christian life and you want to advance in your Christian life, you must stay in the Word of God. You must receive God's Word. There's no way to underscore it. There's no way to emphasize it. I can't put enough exclamation points after it to let you know that, that there, you're, you're not going to have victory apart from the Word of God. You, you, you just, it will not happen. It's impossible. The reason many Christians are so anemic is they've never learned to receive the engrafted Word which is able to save their souls. And so they're saved from the penalty of sin and one day they'll be saved from the presence of sin or the possibility of sin, but they're living under the power of sin now. And they're miserable. The vast majority of people that come to our Reformers Unanimous program on Friday night are not people that are lost. They're people that are saved. But they're living under the power of sin. And, and they have to learn how they can receive the Word and allow it to set them free and take them out of the grass. Now, I want us to look at that word receive. The word receive in James 1.21. Receive with meekness. There's two different words the Bible uses for the word receive. One of the words simply means to take out and grasp. It means that you would simply reach out and take something. Okay? That's one of the words that it means. But that's not the word that's used in James 1.21. It's not used reach out and take something. It, it's... it's a, it, may, it would mean a person by self-prompting could reach out and receive it. Like, like a, like a self-study course at school. Um, uh, if you're, you simply give somebody a book and they read it and they reach in and they grab something from it and they learn something because they read that book or they studied the math book or the chemistry book or whatever, they, they reached in and they taught themselves something. Okay, they grabbed something and received it. But that's not what the word is used here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's not an acquiring through study. The Bible uses a different word here for receive. And what it means is a word that, that means to, to welcome. All it means here is to open up and receive it. That's all the word means here in verse 21. You're saying he's not reach out and take the word because you're not going to get it that way. You have to open up and receive the word. Welcome it. Put out the welcome mat and say you're welcome to come and I want to receive your word. You're not going to learn the word of God just by saying, okay, let me get the Bible out. Let me get a pen and a paper out. Let me open it up. I'm going to figure this thing out. You can do that all day, every day. You're not going to figure it out. All right? You have to receive it. You have to open your heart and welcome the word. That's the difference in the, in the two words that are being used here. Like you'd receive a friend into your house. Someone comes and knocks on your door, somebody you invited to your home, what do you do? You just open the door and say, come in. You welcome them. You welcome them in. You welcome God's Word into your heart and into your life. Now, there's three ways here that God says to receive the Word of God, to welcome it into our lives, okay? Number one, he says, notice we receive the Word with repentance. He says you receive with meekness the engrafted Word, but he said lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted Word. So he's saying, first of all, you receive it with repentance. You have to lay aside some things. You know, when... How many ladies, when you decide you're going to have company over to your house, how many of you go through and clean your house? Hmm? Yeah. Now, you, you, 
to keep it clean all the time. You say, oh, pastor, our house is just always so pristine and nice. Anybody could come at any time, and they would, they would just be absolutely beautiful. Anybody like that? Anybody want to lie like that this morning? Okay, <laughs> good, good, all right. I didn't think so. No, you, you can, you know, listen, it's livable, and we, we, we're okay with it, but it's not company ready, right? right? When, when company comes, we decide, hey, we better put this away, and we better put this away. And, and some things you put, you put in a room, and you say, nobody open that door. <laughs> huh? Huh? Oh, see, we're not the only ones who do that, huh? And so you, you begin to make some arrangements, and you begin to clean, uh, clean up a little bit. And listen, the same thing is true when you welcome the Word of God. When you're going to welcome God's Word into your life, you have to repent some things. You have to clean some things out for that Word to be welcome. To welcome the Word into your heart and your life. You're trying to welcome the Word in without laying aside the filthiness. And, and interesting, the word for filthiness means wax in the ear. Wax in the ear. That's interesting, isn't it? It's something that keeps you from hearing. Okay? And I'm going to ask how many of you have trouble with wax in your ears, okay? I won't ask you that. Uh, but but it'll, it'll dull your hearing. And sometimes you, listen, we get some things in our spiritual ears, some wax in the spiritual ears that keep us from hearing what God wants us to hear and keeps us from understanding what God wants us to understand. You might have heard about the fellow who, somebody come up to him and said, Hey, fella, you got a carrot in your ear. Guy said, what? He said, you got a carrot in your ear. Huh? He said, I said, you got a carrot in your ear. He said, talk a little louder. I got a carrot in my ear. Anyway, that's all I got. But he was, listen, sometimes God tries to tell you what's wrong and you can't even hear what's wrong because your ears stopped up with what is wrong. And you won't listen to what God has to say. And you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to receive the word and welcome the word until you get rid of the wax in your ear. You get rid of the things that are hindering God from you from hearing what God would say. How many times did Jesus say, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear? Get the wax out of your ear. The spiritual wax. That which stops up the ear, that's which keeps you from hearing what God wants you to hear. Listen, when you're saved, God revives your spirit. And now your spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Prior to salvation, the spirit's dead. You're just soul and body. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. What? What I think, what I want, what I feel. And how do, how do lost people live? Doing what I think, what I want, what I feel. And I tell my body that. My body says, hey, it feels good, let's do it. Okay? Now, when I get saved, the spirit... You hath he quickened or made alive, which were dead in trespasses and sins. And he brings your spirit alive. Your spirit listens to God's spirit. The Holy Spirit of God takes up residence in our body when you get saved. The, the third person of the Godhead. You know what he does? He speaks to your spirit. All right? And, and so you get leadings and intuitions. You've experienced that. You've been sitting in a place before and, and you feel a prompting from the Holy Spirit. Give a track to that person. Uh, go, go witness to them. Go, go say something to them. Hey, they're troubled. Go see if you can pray with them. And, and you have those promptings. Uh, sometimes you're prompting, well, don't, don't, don't drive this way home. Drive this way home. And you don't know why that is, but you're listening to the prompting of the Spirit. And it's the Spirit talking to your spirit. Here's what happens, though. When we sin, and we have sin and we allow sin to stay in our body, you know what it does? That clouds that communication between this, His Spirit and our spirit. And we don't, we don't get those intuitions anymore. We're not getting those clear signals anymore. And therefore, we're not sure, does, should I do this, should I not do this? Should I go here, should I, should I do this, what, what should I do? And then you know what we have? You end up coming to the pastor and saying, tell me what I should do. Just tell me what I should do. You know why, why oftentimes people do that? And I'm not talking about getting counsel, but it, they're saying, just tell me what I should do because... I have sin in my life that I can't hear what God wants me to do, so I trust that you can tell me what to do. Now, am I helping you if I just tell you what to do? 
No, I'm not. What I'm, how I'm going to help you is, let's, let's lay aside the filthiness and the superfluity. Let's get the sin out so God can speak to you. There's no, there's no special... Listen, there's not a red phone God has in heaven that says pastors on it. Okay? There isn't one. You know what? Everybody's to have the same access to God. That verse in Hebrews, we all come boldly to the throne of grace. That's all of us. We have all equal access to God. And so, but the problem is the reason that sometimes people want that is because I, I don't have spiritual direction. I'm not getting anything from God. I'm not hearing anything from God because it's blocked. Because I've got so much wax built up, I can't hear. So just tell me what I should do. Tell me what I should do. And, and that's why people come in and say, well, I read the Bible, I just don't get anything. Hmm? Well, check your ears. Check the wax, build up. Maybe there's some things you've got to clean out. You receive the Lord Jesus, and, and, and you, uh, the, the word for here, it's interesting here, the, the word superfluity of naughtiness, that, that's not a common term you hear. Uh, when's the last time you heard somebody tell you, now, Brother Taylor, lay aside your superfluity of naughtiness. <laughs> you just don't hear that. Okay? But, but it's a term that, that means this, that which remains. It literally means that which is left over. It's kind of it's kind of what what it'd be. Uh, it, it's kind of the hangover from your sin before you were saved. That's what he's referring to. It's kind of uh, sin that remains over from your old life. That's the superfluity or superfluous of naughtiness. It's old old habits, old ways that carried over with you even though you've been saved. You still carried those old things with you. It's, it's kind of like when Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus. And, and remember, He called Lazarus, come forth. And of course, He came forth, but He was wrapped up. Now, He didn't say, all right, Lazarus, you're, you're good. No, you have to unwrap me. You have to get off these grave clothes. I'm not dead anymore. Here's the problem. A lot of people get saved. They've listened to the call of Jesus and they've been born again, but they still walk around with the old grave clothes on. They still got a lot of the old stuff that's hanging on them from when they were lost. And they still let those stay around. And so he's saying, let, you're not going to have liberty. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You have, why don't you let Christ loose you, free you so you can go on for him? You don't have to live in bondage to the old sin and in the hangover sins anymore that you used to have. That's why when the prodigal came home, he came home to his father, he didn't say, hey, he didn't say, hey, welcome home, son, make a dinner. No, you know what he did? Hey, we're getting you out of those old rags. You smell like a pig. We're getting you out of the old rags. We're putting a new coat on you, putting a ring on your finger, putting shoes on your feet. We're having a party. The first thing he did, he got rid of all that stuff that would reminded the prodigal of the old life. Hmm? You remember? Hmm? Danny Wright started coming to church and got his life right with God. He was looking about like that. A little less of him, but he, was, he had a shirt on, tie, coat. He came out soul winning on Saturday. Wanted to go soul winning with the pastor. we go out and make visits and he was a zealous man. I mean, he'd, he'd passed... John and Romans and gospel tracts, if, if anybody was moving, man, he got them. He was, he was excited, man. He was, he was, he was, he was on fire and, and ready to talk to everybody. We got back to church and had a good morning, and we were talking in the car, and I said, Danny, you're, you're doing great, excited about uh, your excitement for the Lord, your zeal for the Lord. I said, there's just, there's just one thing that you have that still reminds you and everybody else of your old life. He goes, what's that? I said, that right there. He still had an earring in his ear. When I said, you know, I said, that is still, you know what that was? That's just a hangover from before he was saved. Before he was living for God. You know what he did? He sat in that car right there. It was in this ear, his left ear. You know what he did? He reached up and he yanked that out just like that. 
I went. He took it out. He said, you'll never see that in my ear again. Wow. That's what we're talking about. That's why, that's why when folks come to Reformers Unanimous, the very first principle is, if God's against it, so am I. First thing you've got to establish is the fact, if God says that's wrong, that's wrong. We'll say more about that in just a minute. But listen, don't, 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 it's time to lay aside those hangover sins. Those things you're carrying along with you from before you were saved. And allow... God to speak to you through the Bible. You want the Bible to speak to you? Do you want the Bible to come alive to you? Then you have to be willing to repent of the filthiness and the superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness, which is able to save your soul. Instead of fill my cup, you might sing cleanse my cup. Cleanse my cup. I've messed it up. <laughs> and help me. And then you can receive the word. So you receive it with repentance. The second thing I see is you receive the word with readiness. Readiness. That's what that word meekness means. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Weakness, or meekness means a compliant spirit. It's a ready spirit. Ready to obey. And, and it, it's, it, we talk in... Uh, the definition with our RU program is a lubricant. It takes away the friction. Hey, when, when you know what God wants you to do, is there friction? Or is that a smooth transition? God tells me and I obey. God tells me and I'm ready to do it. Or God tell me and I'm like Lot, they kind of got to drag me out with my feet digging in the sand. How ready are we to, to, to do what God wants us to do and to do what the Bible says to do? Meekness isn't weakness. Meekness means you're teachable, you're trainable, you're controllable. They tell me that when they're trying to break a horse, a wild horse, and they get on there and they ride him and they ride him and they ride him and they say when that horse finally gets used to having somebody on his back and he is broken, so to speak, they say he's been meeked. The horse has been meeked. He's now willing to come under the control of somebody else. What's the horse been before that? Doing his own thing. Hmm? Doing what he wants to do. How ready are you to say, when I welcome the Word of God, I'm going to do what it says. I'm going to obey what God tells me to do. I'm not going to make excuses. How, how teachable are you? You see, when God, when God says, you're supposed to do A, B, and C, you know what we say? Well, you know, I think A, I can do. B, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. C, well, maybe. maybe. Maybe I'll do C. I mean, I do C sometimes. But I can't do C all the time. You see what we do? We're not ready to obey. We're, we're, ready, to, we're ready to make excuses. We're not so ready to make the effort. What kind of friction does God encounter when you read His Word and you know what, he's, what He tells you to do? Well, I know God says I shouldn't do this, but... And then we give our reasons. You know what that is? Friction. That's not meekness. Meekness is submitting to what God tells me to do. And that's how you learn from God's Word. That's how you receive His Word. One man said, I'm open to conviction. I'd just like to see the man who could convict me. Well, that's how some people are. That's how stubborn they are. Okay, preacher, I'm here to be blessed. Let's see if you can do it. Well, I guess I'll guarantee you this. You're not getting a blessing. You see, how, how meek are you? You have to repent. You receive the word with repentance. That is, you have to be clean. You have to receive it with meekness. You have to be broken. You have to be ready. You have to be willing to do what God, what God tells you to do. And then thirdly, he says, receive the word with responsiveness. Responsiveness. Verse 22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. How horrible it is 
to be deceived. You ever been, you ever been deceived by somebody? You ever been, been taken? A lot of times, you know, a lot of times con artists get by with things for quite a while. You know why? Because people are embarrassed to call the cops and tell them they were taken. That they've been snookered. Okay? That's a, that's a fancy Greek word for deceived. Snookered. All right? And um, you, 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 you just, it, 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 the heart can deceive you. And so be careful that you're not deceived. That you don't, that your heart doesn't deceive yourself. Self-deception is the worst kind of all. Is you deceive yourself into thinking that nothing's wrong when something is wrong. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 26, that the foolish man hears the words and doesn't do them. He builds his house upon the sand. The one who builds on the sand is not the one who didn't hear the word. He heard the word, but he never did it. That's a self-deceived man. Now listen, what's wrong with a lot of church people is you listen to sermons. Wow, did I say that? You got a notebook full of sermons, a notebook full of sermon notes. You may have a bunch of CDs that have a bunch of sermons on them, but you have no more intention of obeying any of those notes or any of those CDs. You're just a collector. You, you like taking in truth. You like listening to truth. But you have no intention of doing the truth. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. You're never happy because of the Bible you know. You're happy because of the Bible you live. Don't. It's not enough you to walk out the door and say that was a good message pastor I, I, don't, I don't preach for your compliments if you want to compliment the preaching live the Bible you just heard live the sermon out in your life that's the best compliment you give to the sermon live by the word of God be doers of the word and not hearers only Let me give you a test, simple test, not a hard test. Is your knowledge of the Bible making you more like Jesus Christ? Is your knowledge of the Bible making you more like Jesus Christ? If it isn't, you're not receiving the Word of God. You're not responding to the Word of God like you should. Now James gives us a good example of what he's talking about here in verse 23 and 24. He said, If any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. When he says you behold your natural face in a glass, that's like looking in the mirror. Natural is the face you were born with. Okay, I realize that some are very pleased about that and some might not be so pleased about that, but it is what God gave you. You know, it's funny, when they get ready to bury a person in their laying casket, how many people come by and say how natural they look? Your natural face in a glass. You've got it. And you're stuck with it. It is your face. Somebody said, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly goes to the bone. But um, <laughs> beauty fades, but ugly holds its own. Amen? But uh, that's our natural face. But here, so here he says what a guy does is he beholds himself, and then he goes his way and forgets what he saw. Now it's interesting, when he says here, beholds his face in, in verse number 23, uh, about beholding his face in a, nat in, a, in a natural glass, it's a casual glance is the word that's being used. 
He's just a person you kind of you wake up in the morning, you have some stubble on your face, you have some sleep maybe in your eyes, your hair is sticking out all different directions. Of course, nowadays you can't tell whether somebody is wearing their hair that way or they went to sleep that way. You can't tell. Sometimes I look at some of these guys and they got hair sticking out which way and I think, man, you didn't look in the mirror today, did you? And then you find out they mean it to be that way. And I think, oh, help us. But you look and you, you do. You, you look in the mirror and ladies, you do the same thing. And, and you, what you do is you're assessing the damages from the night and you decide what needs to be done for me to be presentable in public today. There's not, I don't think, I'm looking around at everybody, I don't think anybody got up, doesn't look like anybody got up, looked in the mirror and said, good enough. And you just uh, threw some clothes on and came to church. Now, it, 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 some take longer than others, understand, to uh, get yourself presentable. But you understand, you don't just glance in the mirror, then go your way, no change, no, no, no grooming, no bathing, nothing. Uh, you, don't, you don't do that. Uh, but that's just a, a casual look, and that's what that word, it just looked at it and then went off and forgot about it. But the second time it talks about looking into the perfect law of liberty, it's not a casual glance, it's a careful gaze. It is a purposeful look. It's, it's a man looking into the perfect law of liberty. It's the same thing, it's the exact same word when Peter and John ran to the tomb, and it says they stoop down and looking in. They're looking intently into the tomb. That word looking there into the tomb, that's the same word that's being used here for looking into the law of God. Not a casual glance. A chapter a day will keep the devil away. No, it won't. Okay? A casual glance isn't going to work. It's not going to happen. It's looking steadfastly into the Word of God. Not, not a casual glance, but a steadfast, careful, gazing into the Word of God. To read it, to study it, so you can memorize it, so you can meditate in it. Someone said, too many Christians have Brill Cream type of devotions. A little dab will do you. We just read a little verse, we read a little... Uh, out of the daily bread, and we say, okay, I had my devotions. That's all it amounts to. And that's not, and that's, there's nothing wrong with those things for a snack, but you can't live on that. You can't thrive on that. You may like saltine crackers, but you're not going to eat those for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When, when have you ever gazed into the Bible steadfastly carefully intently to receive what God has for you studying as brother Taylor mentioned this morning to show yourself approved unto God no wonder no wonder the Bible's not real to you no wonder God, uh, you don't get anything when you, when you read it. Because it's not going to, listen, is God going to give His choice truth to those who casually glance at it? No, He is not. You have to diligently gaze. What you do is you look into the perfect law of liberty. Now, hey, just like that mirror shows you what's going on and what you have to fix. Did you know when you look into this and you gaze intently into this, it shows you what you have to fix? It'll show you the changes that need to be made in your life. And then you have to set out to make those changes. You have to ask God to bring about those changes in you. And He will as you continue in His Word. Because when you continue in His Word, then are you His disciples indeed. Now let me help you with something about the Bible and studying the Bible. You'll come to parts of the Bible that you don't understand. What do I do with those parts? 
Let me, let me help you. Obey the Bible you do understand. And God will begin to open your understanding to the parts you do not understand. But you will never understand what you don't understand until you obey what you do understand. Mark Twain said, it's not the parts of the Bible I don't understand that bother me, it's the parts I do understand that bother me. And that's true. So be obedient to what God does show you. And then God will show you more. You have to have a readiness and responsiveness to receive God's Word. That's, hey, when you got saved, if you've gotten saved, you, you heard the Word of God and you had to receive it. But first, listen, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You ask Christ to forgive you of your sin, you invite Him in your life. Listen, nobody gets saved saying, well, yeah, I'll take Jesus, but I'm not giving this up. Or I'm not giving that up. Or I'm not going to stop this. Well, then you're, you're trying to cut a deal with God. God doesn't cut deals. Okay? And so you, you have repentance and you have faith in Christ. They go together. You put your faith in Christ. And then, listen, you know what you do? You, you, you also had meekness. You, you submitted yourself to what God said. That what? I'm a sinner who can't save myself. I need a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And you trust Him as your Savior. What happened? You responded. Hey, you could have stopped there, known you were a sinner, known that faith in Christ had saved you because the Bible says so, but if you don't respond to that, you're still lost. You had to respond. You had to invite Christ to be your Savior. And if you've never responded to Him, I, I urge you to respond to Him this morning. He's here. And if you'll by faith call upon Jesus Christ, ask Him to forgive your sins, Ask Him to be your Savior. He'll give you the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says you shall be saved. You will be absolutely certain you're on your way to heaven. And then you're saved. Listen, why don't you ask Christ, listen, not just to be saved from the penalty of sin, not just to be saved from the presence or the possibility of sin, which you will be in heaven, but why don't you ask Him, I want to be saved from the power of sin. And you do that by receiving the Word of God. And you receive that word of God with repentance, with readiness, and with responsiveness. That's how you welcome the word of God into your life. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, thank you for this truth here in James and the, the helpfulness that it is to us. Father, I pray that this morning you would have a, a great desire and, and, yea, even a passion in the hearts of people this morning that they'd be willing to receive the word of God. Lord, those in the room who are, they have the wax in the ears. They've had a buildup of things in their life that they've allowed to come into their life and it's blocking the communication between your spirit and their spirit. It's blocking the communication when the spirit would speak to them as they read the word of God. I pray that they would repent. They would they would confess and forsake and know that you'll have mercy. Oh, and the Bible will open up to them and spiritual truths will come through to them. Oh God, touch their hearts this morning. Help us to be meek. Lord, help us not to, not to be stiff-necked and cause friction when we know it, what it is you want us to do. Father, help us not to carry over sin from before we knew you as our Savior. Help us to be responsive to your word. To be doers of the word and not hearers only. And I pray, Lord, for those in the room, if any have never responded to Christ, they never have called upon the Lord Jesus and put their faith and trust in Him as their Savior, that they trust Him as their Savior today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment. But I wonder how many folks here this morning would, would say, Pastor, I, there's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner. I knew I needed a Savior. I knew Jesus was the Savior I needed. And I responded to that.
And I called on Jesus and I've trusted Him from my heart to be my Savior. And Pastor, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know I'm saved. I know that I'm on my way to heaven. I have eternal life. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Will you slip it up for me? You say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. Okay, you may put it down. You're here today and would say, Pastor, I, I don't know that for sure. I, I can't say for certain that I know when I draw my last breath here, my next one will be in heaven. Would you allow me to pray for you? No one will embarrass you. Nobody's going to call you out. I'll simply remember you in prayer. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down for me and just say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? Just slip it up and put it back down. You couldn't raise your hand the first time, but you'll raise it now. Would you do that today? And let me pray for you? All right. Thank you. How many believers here this morning can say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart today about receiving His Word. I don't know whether it's repentance. I don't know whether it's readiness. I don't know whether it's responsiveness. But one of those areas God spoke to your heart about. What's something that's keeping you from being and hearing from God like you ought to. And you say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart today. Pray for me. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. Listen carefully. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, in a moment, I'll finish the prayer. We'll stand to our feet. The pianist will play. Brother Bob will sing. If God has spoken to your heart this morning, others are coming just to kneel at the altar and pray. Do business with God. Why don't you slip from your seat and come to the front? We have people who will be here. They've been trained. They'll take a Bible. They'll show you how you can know for sure from the Bible. You're on your way to heaven and you have eternal life. Why don't you come? When others are coming, just come. I'll meet you at the front. Make this the greatest day of your life. When you can come to know Christ as your Savior. You can walk out the door in a few minutes knowing you have eternal life. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation now. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts today. And I pray, Lord, that each individual would do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. May your will be done in every heart and life is my prayer. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist plays. As she plays, Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, Just will you? Just as I am That's right. without one plea, That's right. but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to read my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without a lamb of God I come. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come. Still time for you to come this morning while she plays. Folks have responded to the invitation. 
I don't know if you'll have a better time to get saved, but I know you won't have a better opportunity than you have right now. If you've never received Christ, why don't you come? If God's touching your heart, if He's prodding your heart, just come. The hardest step is the first step. And then it's all downhill from there, and you'll be at the front before you know it, and someone will be sharing with you from the Scripture. Uh, just respond to the Lord this morning while she plays, will you? Look this way for a minute, if you would, please. Uh, we have a young lady being dealt with right now for salvation, and so we'll let them deal with her and uh, be thorough with that. We're also glad to have Mark Bunner coming this morning. Mark's right here. Uh, stand up for us, Mark. Mark's coming, rededicating his life to Christ. Uh, Mark has been saved and been scripturally baptized, uh, but just wants to dedicate himself afresh and anew to serving Amen. God. And uh, that's a great decision, my friend. That's wonderful. And uh, that's good. Give him a hand, will you? Amen. That's great. That's exciting. Mark's, Mark's never really, I don't think, faithfully been in church since I uh, just started coming here. So this is all brand new uh, experience for him. So uh, encourage these, these uh, believers. While he's been saved for a while, he's really a new Christian. And so encourage this man. And uh, he wants to serve the Lord and wants to dedicate himself to God. And uh, let's be a source of encouragement for him as he endeavors to do that. Amen? Amen. That's great, Mark. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll let them deal with this young lady, and uh, we'll prepare to go home today. Be back tonight, all right? And uh, you don't have to stay home and watch the Super Bowl. That's why they made DVRs, okay? And uh, you can watch it all later. And, uh, but that's, we'll have a great service together tonight. And a, and a very important message the Lord laid on my heart about truth has fallen in the street. I think it'll be very helpful, uh, very applicable for the time in which we live right now in America. And uh, hope you'll be back tonight at 6.30, okay? 5.30 for the soul winning class, and uh, let's bow together for prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful morning together this morning. Thank you, Lord, for decisions that have been made for you. And Father, we ask that you dismiss us now with your care and your blessing. Lord, I pray that each of us would be mindful of your presence as we walk out of this building this morning. And Lord, now help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lord, help us to live the truths that we know. Give us that ability and that power to do that. And Lord, bring us back safely for the service this evening. May you make our hearts ready that we'll be ready to receive the word as it's preached to us tonight. Give us a good afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. What? What do you want to do? Oh, you want to do Joy of the Lord and I love my church. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Bible leaps. All right. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>